So as we enter this time of prayer, let us pause. And take time to be still. We read Psalm 16 and verses 1 to 2. Keep me safe, O God. I have run for dear life to you. I say to God, be my Lord. Without you, nothing makes sense. Keep me safe, O oh God. I've run for dear life to you. I say to God, be my Lord. And without you, nothing makes sense. How happy are those who know what sorrow means, for they would be given courage and comfort. Matthew 4 and verse 5. Pete Gregg says that he and his wife would not want to go back to the dark days of the brain surgery that his wife had to endure. But neither would they want to go back to the days before their lives were hijacked by fear. And so he says that he guesses that he prefers the people that they have become through all of these contradictions. So ask yourself, can I see any positive ways in which the Holy Spirit might be using my sorrow for good? Are there any signs of him changing me in some way through these difficult times? And so we pray. Father, if you were to hand me a big red switch to solve any problems and heal my pain, I would flick it without hesitation. But in the absence of that switch, please at least make something good out of this mess. Don't let this ugly situation make me ugly. Give me beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Isaiah 61 and verse 3. Our yielding prayer over the next few days is going to be the prayer of Jesus in Gethsemane, which we studied at the start. But before praying these famous words, clench your fist, holding in your left hand your greatest desire, the miracle you need God to do, and hold in your right hand your deepest dread. 
And so we pray. Abba Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Now open your left hand to offer God your deepest desire and ask for a miracle. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Now open your right hand and naming your deepest dread, make the difficult decision to relinquish control. Amen.